Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to Wednesday, the 24th of March's Elephant Professional Lecture. Um, as you know, we've been going most weeks, I think almost for a year now, we've been having a professional lecture where we, bring, we invite people from around the world who work in different fields with elephants to come and come and take you a little bit deeper into, into their professional, their professional um, sphere and what they what they investigate and how they how they know about elephants and give us a deeper understanding of, of the creatures that we can get with our standard live streams or our education. Um, this week, having uh, having paid tribute to the to the people of Myanmar last week with uh, Joanna McLean's lecture, uh, this week we're going to, to talk to talk about the elephants um, with uh, the Myanmar Myanmar Timber Elephant Project and two researchers. Uh, it looks as though Martin Selkman will go first, and then um, obviously Ann Leamon will go after her, after him, sorry. Um, and they will be talking about personality and sociality in the semi-captive timber elephants. Uh, 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 thoughts are going out once again to, to all of our friends in Myanmar. I've been lucky enough to spend some time there and to meet the timber elephants and to be the timber cats. So I'll be fantastic, fan fascinated to learn more about their, their personalities and how they interact with the and with each other. Um, Send also my uh, thinking very deeply of all my little friends who are over there. So, without further ado, I will hand you over to Martin, and he will tell you about his um, his researches from uh, from Happier Times. Thank you very much, John, for the introduction. Uh, we are very happy and excited to be part of this lecture series. And uh, as I already mentioned, Dosian and me are researchers in the same research group, the Myanmar Timber Elephant Project. And it's actually the same team that uh, Carly and Jenny belong to. They have been given their talks, I think, like three weeks ago um, in the same lecture series. And uh, I want to start just uh, talk or say something very briefly about me. So I'm a biologist and I'm generally interested in, in animal behavior, especially personality and social behavior, but also a bit of behavioral ecology and physiology and a bit of welfare as well. I did my master's back then at the University of Bayreuth in Germany. That's where I'm also originally from. And back then I was working on the behavior and physiology of juvenile rabbits. And for my PhD, I moved then to Finland, being a PhD student at Oberkrimi University in Turku, where I worked on the behavioral ecology, personality, and a bit of stress physiology also of eider ducks. And since 2015, I joined the we are my Tim Elephant Project at the University of Turku, and that's where I'm still am today. So you can see I was by then scaling up my uh, the research animals or so study animals, and today we'll talk about some of the projects I'm working with with the elephants. Uh, you might have heard this already from Carly and Jenny's talks, perhaps, but for those of you who haven't seen the talks yet, I will provide some basic uh, information on our study system the population of semi-captive tim elephants from Myanmar. Uh, Myanmar is home to the largest captive population of Asian elephants in the world. And with the working tim elephants making up just over half of this number. And Myanmar is also thought to be the home of the second largest wild population of Asian elephants in the world. These tim elephants, they work in the timber industry. And most of them are owned by the Myanmar timber enterprise. And the elephants usually they drag and pull out logs from the forest to nearby river, the logs are put together to rafts and shipped downstream to bigger collection areas. Uh, each elephant comes with a tattooed ID number on the back and also a logbook that carefully details all their life events. So we have information on every elephant or many elephants, for example, as, such as date and place of birth and also the cause of death. We have information about the mother and all the calves born for the females. Um, we also know where the elephants have been working and how much, uh, and if they have been captured from the wild or if they have been born already uh, in, in the camps. And we also know their taming year. Uh, but who takes care of the elephants? Well, of course, it's the, the, the Mahujli who works with their focal elephant on a daily basis. They, they clean them, they wash them in the mornings, and they always check them for injuries. Uh, then we also have the veterinarians who perform monthly health checks and they take care of wounds, treat diseases and injuries. We also provide supplements for the weak elephants or for calves when needed, and they also provide medicine. Um, 
There's also a mobile clinic, which is basically a four by four uh, vehicle and it's stocked with medicine and medical equipment to reach the more remote camps to also provide sort of say healthcare to the elephants when needed. And thanks to the vets and the Mahout's efforts, we have all these amazingly detailed information uh, available for our study. So the workload and as well as the holidays of the elephants are strictly regulated by the government. Uh, pregnant females halfway through the pregnancy are relieved from uh, work duties and mothers have one year of rest after having given birth. And also there's no work during the hot season since it's usually just simply too hot for the elephants. After the working hours, the elephants are released to the forest to forage on their own, and they are usually not provisioned with any extra food. Uh, reproduction is not managed by humans, but instead the females can encounter both captive bulls, but also wild bulls during the nights. Um, a usual work group um, consists of uh, six elephants together with their head riders or the mahouts. And there is always one head mahout, so to say, supervising uh, all the work tasks. And traditionally, the elephant mahout bond is very strong, as many mahouts start to work with the elephants when they're uh, very young. Um, so both mahout and elephant, and this relationship can last until both partners are very old. And because of that, the mahouts develop a really strong relationship with the elephant, and they usually have excellent knowledge about the elephant's different behaviors. But however, as Jenny was telling us three weeks ago in her talk, like this is not always the case anymore. So in general, we know a lot about um, the behavior of uh, African elephants. So for example, the Ambroselli Elephant Research Project starting in 1972, it's the world's longest study of elephants and provides a large body of knowledge on the life history and uh, behavior of African elephants. But also our knowledge on the Asian elephant life history and behavior is, is pretty good. And it was, for example, very nicely summarized in uh, Raman Sukumar's 2003 book, The Living Elephants. Uh, and there's also lots of amazing recent research done by several groups, of course, working on, on Asian elephants. Uh, so, if, for example, some of the more recent studies on Asian elephants in Thailand have suggested that elephants are probably self aware. So they can recognize their, they did some experiments in. Uh, they could show that elephants recognize their own bodies as obstacles. In some individuals, they even managed to pass the famous mirror test. Furthermore, they also can cooperate to solve uh, certain tasks. Um, yeah, but I want to talk about the personality in these elephants now. So let's get started. But before we can continue with the elephants, uh, I would like to briefly introduce the, the field of animal personality. Um, because I know that tell people that animals have personality, then of course you always get some skeptic reaction sometimes. It's like, what, what is this all about? Um, but I guess we can all agree at least that in, in pets and in farm animals, it's, it's quite easy to see something like personalities in like domesticated animals. So when I give a presentation, I usually ask the audience at this point, like who has a pet? And of course, there's always many people who have a pet. And if I ask, okay, would you assign your uh, would you describe your, your pet as having like some kind of personality and people usually always say yes. Um, but it's like that people often project their own personality on the animals or they expect the animals to complement their own personality. And if we accept this view of animal personality, then it's really just a product of imagination or social emotional needs. However, it has been scientifically demonstrated that also wild animals do have personalities. And one uh, definition of animal personality that one can often read in studies is uh, consistent individual variation in behavior across time and context. Now that does not necessarily mean that an animal always behaves exactly the same way. It's more that animals show like a tendency to behave similar over time and situations. So for example, animal A will always be more active or aggressive than animal B. And in the past, biologists were a bit more reluctant to investigate this individual variation. Uh, it was more considered as noise or non-adaptive variation around an adaptive population mean. But individual variation is really biologically meaningful and has many ecological and evolutionary consequences. I just want to make sure again, if I talk about animal personality, I don't mean something like this. Um, if you look at the definition of human personality, 
It could be set of habitual behaviors, cognitions, or emotional patterns. And when looking again at the definition of animal personality, we see it's, it's quite similar. Again, just repeating these consistent differences between individuals in their behavior across time and context. And I'd just like to show these cat photos here because <laughs> we gave a presentation to uh, school kids a while ago and uh, just talking a bit about science and what we do and what it is. And then when I showed this slide, I didn't really expect the reaction. So it, they, yeah, it took us maybe a minute to calm the kids down. So they were really excited about all these cat photos. <laughs> it's maybe the only thing that they remembered from this presentation. Um, but okay, from funny cat videos now to some more serious science stuff. Uh, don't worry, I won't discuss this graph now with you in detail. Uh, this is just to show you that there's really some small people out there that have been thinking about this and that you can actually measure and present personality mathematically and statistically. So all you need to know here basically is that this red line here is basically what it means when we talk about animal personality. So I hope I could convince at least some skeptics that this is really something real what we do here. How do we measure personality? Well, there's uh, several ways. Uh, first, we can do something that's called behavioral coding of the focal individual in a natural or experimental setting. So this is like really observing the animal um, and making notes or you film and record the animal and make notes and, and analyze that. Um, you can also bring an animal to the lab uh, and do some more experimental testing. Like for example, putting this mouse here in a new environment uh, and then you record how explorative or how bold the mouse is. And this is admittedly a bit difficult with elephants. So we decided to go for the third option. And the trade trading. So here, uh, in trading experience observes the focal rates behaves of the print scale. Uh, but why should the personality in elephants? Firstly, elephants have some interesting characteristics, abilities, and they also exhibit life history patterns that are quite similar to humans. And that makes them a really suitable subject for comparative studies, for example, also between humans and non-human primates and elephants on topics, for example, like personality. And except for humans and other primates and maybe some cetaceans, there is surprisingly little we know about the personalities of highly social long-lived mammals. And secondly, the studies bridging human personality to that of other highly social long-lived species are mostly restricted to a single taxa, it's primates, or they often occur only in captive settings or with smaller sample sizes. So the, the real Martin elephants here, they really gave us a very good opportunity sort of to expand on this research. And I saw there was another talk in the lecture series, actually, I think it was from last year. Sarah Jacobson and Sasha Montero, and they also talked about studying uh, elephant personality. So if you're interested in this topic, I also recommend watching their talk. Okay, so but what did we do? I said we use questionnaires uh, that we, we asked to the mahouts and the observers or the mahouts, they rated 28 different behaviors on a range from one to four with one meaning the elephant expresses their behavior very rarely and four meaning the elephant expresses the behavior most of the time. And in this way, we got ratings from uh, 257 individual elephants. And basically every elephant got rated two times, once by the focal elephant's own mahout, and once by the head mahout of the group. And I don't wanna bother you now with all the technical details of the statistical analysis here. Uh, just want to say that during the analysis, several behaviors dropped out from the final model of the final result, uh, because we found that several behaviors that were not uh, what we call highly repeatable between the raiders, meaning that uh, these behaviors, or for these behaviors, the mahouts and the head mahouts, they didn't really agree much on what they're actually rating. So we have to sort of throw them out from further analysis. So it's just in case if you wonder that you don't see all the 28 behaviors now in the results that I show you. Uh, what we discovered was that uh, personality, at least in uh, our study population of elephants, manifests in three distinct personality factors. Uh, the first one we called attentiveness, because uh, here uh, behaviors cluster basically that are more related to uh, yeah, work-related behaviors. 
In the second one, we call sociability because here we can find uh, uh, yeah, lots of social positive behaviors that are correlated with each other. And then the third one, if you want, you can call it the, the dark side of elephant personality. We call it aggressiveness. Um, so if you, I don't know if you remember, like for example, humans, they would have had five personality factors. It's this famous big five, just as a uh, comparison here. But we were also interested if uh, male and female elephants differ in their personality, um, because sometimes in some animals you can find these uh, sex differences. And though we did not find difference in the uh, structure per se, so uh, males and females in elephants, they have the same structure. We did find that uh, on average, females did score higher on sociability than males. And males, they scored higher on aggressiveness than females. But there was no differences between males and females um, with regards to attentiveness. Um, and this is kind of in line with previous works also and could also be explained by the different life histories of the sexes. So for females, it's perhaps more important to be more social since they live in these family units where uh, it's the social positive interactions that are important for group cohesion and for reducing conflict. And for males, perhaps on the other hand, it's probably more important to be more aggressive since this can help them to maintain a higher rank, which also in turn helps to get them access to uh, females. Okay, that was uh, the studies on personality. Now I want to move on to uh, sociality. So in the wild, uh, Asian elephants, of course, they live in family units with uh, well, the females. They live in family units with calves, sisters, and aunties. And uh, the males are often solitary or in loosely associated bachelor groups. And I'm aware that this is a somewhat outdated view, though. Uh, since recent research in this area has also shown that social interactions are really very important for males. And my point here is just that perhaps overall sociality is just uh, more important for females than for males. Uh, the sexes do not account each other often. But of course, we can ask ourselves and what, what happens when elephants are removed from the forest and brought into the elephant camps or when the elephants grow up in these camps? Because it's a bit different situation here, of course, the, the males and females, they work together in the same group, they live in the same camps and so on. So, and even though they live, I mean, they do live in the natural habitat in the forest and they can express a large range of natural behaviors. And in general, they also do much better than, than zoo elephants uh, in terms of mortality, for example. It's of course still not the same thing as you would live in the wild when it comes to the social environment. But here we have to keep in mind that, I mean, the global population size is around 40,000 to 50,000 individuals. And we all know that the populations of these threatened species are declining. Uh, and it's also important to understand that around a third of all Asian elephants are actually managed by humans. So this is a large number. And it is essential to study the sociality of these captive or semi-captive elephants as well. Um, so how did we assess or measure sociality in the MTE elephants? Again, we used the questionnaires. So we asked the mahouts about their local elephants' social life, so to say. But we also used the information from the logbooks. And uh, with this, we got data on the social landscape of 233 individual elephants. And what I mean with social landscape here is, um, yeah, the social landscape encompasses several measures of sociality. So we could measure if an elephant is solitary or social. So if it's... Uh, basically mostly always alone and not interacting with other elephants, or if the elephant is usually spending time and interacting with others. Basically we check if uh, they have friends or if they don't have friends. Then we also count the number of friends and we know about the identity of those friends. Uh, we know of course about the work group size, which as I said usually is like six elephants, but it can vary a bit. Uh, we also know about the proportion of females and males within the work group. And we also know if there is calves present in the work group or not. So these are our measures of sociality, which we call the social landscape. And with this uh, information on friendships, for example, we can make so-called sociograms, what you see here. Uh, so this is just an example, and a bit preliminary still like from, uh, from the friendships of one logging camp. Uh, and due to the nature of our data, we unfortunately can't, not, cannot really do like any real social network analysis with this, but, but plotting these relationships 
all these friendships that can give us insights what's going on in the camps and it can also spur like new research questions and give new ideas so for example what is what makes this individual here oh one eight nine don't remember her name now uh it makes her like special that she would connect like these two individuals with this one as you can see this one is not really friends with this one and this one but she connects them basically uh what one could also see here is that these are two individuals that are solitary you don't have friends and you can see that uh, these both are males so it just gives you an interesting or gives you an idea like what, what's going on there um but what we found was that most elephants actually do have friends so it's only about 13 percent of the studied elephants that are solitary and uh, we found that these solitary individuals they are usually older they are more likely to be captive born and they are more likely to be male so that's that's also quite interesting um but we are also interested in the uh, potential health effects of sociality and one way to investigate this is to look at different physiological measures so one of these measures for example is the hormone cortisol it's also called the main stress hormone in mammals and what we do is we collect fecal samples from the elephants. Uh, we send sub samples of those to the lab. We let the lab technicians do their magic. And then we basically get information on the cortisol levels of an elephant from its poop, which is pretty amazing. Uh, cortisol is a hormone that's involved in the basic energy metabolism uh, of an animal and also in its stress reactions. So that's why it's also a very good indicator for, for welfare. So, for example, individuals or animals with high levels of cortisol might experience a higher energy demand, or they also might experience more stress than others with lower levels of cortisol. So our results here. So on the x-axis, you will see like several measures of our social landscape or sociality. And here on the y-axis, uh, you have the stress hormone concentrations here zero goes up to 200 and what we found for males is that males uh, who are solitary uh, they have higher levels of stress hormone concentrations than the ones that engage in social interactions also for males again uh, we found that males that work are in a work group uh, with more other males than females uh, they experience higher stress hormone levels than if they would be in a group where there's more females than males. And finally, that's a result for females. Um, females in a group where there is uh, calves present, they also experience lower uh, stress hormone levels than females in a group where there's no calves present. That was, was quite interesting. Um, so basically what that means that males uh, or male elephants they might benefit from social bonds uh, as is shown by their lower levels of uh, stress hormones and uh, in groups with more males than females present it's maybe an increase in uh, competition between the males for females that it might explain why we find higher stress hormone levels uh, in males in these groups and the strong social bonds between mothers other mothers and calves and the fact that males do not really contribute much to calf care could explain the lower stress hormone levels in females when calves are present in the group. Um, I mean, the picture is a bit more complex, of course, than this. And uh, I hope we have this paper or this study out soon. And then I recommend that you can read more about it if you're interested. So to briefly summarize, um, Asian team elephants personality manifests in three distinct personality factors and we found some sex differences uh, but i have to say here also like this is most likely not the final picture because we could not include like a range of other behaviors in our analysis for example behaviors related to foraging or mating so i would call it like a preliminary result and there's still more work to be done as often <laughs> And uh, we find friendships in most of the Asian team elephants, and there is potential links to the health or physiology. Uh, potential implications could be with regards to personality. So some personality types, they might be more suited for certain work tasks. They might be better at cooperating when working. 
but also some personality types might be more susceptible to soft training methods. So it has been shown that uh, there are links between these things and personality in other species and also in zoo animals. So this would need still a bit more further research, of course, to be able to give like real advice, but it's, it's something that managers should keep in mind. And usually, I guess the moods and head moods, they know about the elephants and they, they do uh, take this all into account. Uh, with regards to sociality, um, if you look at the solitary males that experience higher stress hormone levels, could be maybe that, um, I mean, of course, it could be also a choice of the solitary individuals that they don't really want to interact with others. But if not, it would be good if uh, these individuals um, would experience maybe more care by moods or like we could try to get them more engaged in, in the social group. Um, but it also would need more research, of course. But what's really important is or what we found is that the social component really matters when you create these art, kind of artificial work groups. So uh, that's, that's really something to uh, take into consideration. All right. And with this, I want to hand over to Ocean, who will talk about elephants and demahoots. To change the stop sharing now. I hope you can see my screen. Uh, hi, thank you very much, Martin. To start with, uh, Osiad, hi. Uh, sorry, no, I can't see your screen. Oh, sorry. Stuck with that, sorry. Okay, here we go. It's on its way. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, thank you, John, for the invite. Uh, I'm Ossian Nierman, and uh, as you can probably hear, I am from France, uh, where I graduated from a degree in behavioral ecology and a master degree in neurosciences. And now I'm conducting, I am conducting my PhD at the University of Turku in Finland. And uh, it's where I'm investigating the human-animal relationship in working animals. And thanks to the Myanmar Timber Elephant Project, I have the opportunity to investigate the mouth elephant relationship and how the familiarity between the elephant and the mahout uh, may affect the elephant cooperation in a working context. And this is what I'm going to present today. So uh, Martin uh, already uh, presented you the population where we are working with. So it's a uh, semi-captive elephant a state owned by, by the Myanmar government and used for the, by the Myan Myanmar timber enterprise for the tree logging. They are considered as uh, semi-captive uh, individuals as they work uh, by day, but this is the, by night where they are free to roam, forage and mate with uh, wild elephant and other cap semi-captive elephants. Uh, so what is it about the Myanmar timber elephant uh, life? Uh, then from birth to the age of five, they are staying with their mother. And they are tamed at the age of uh, five and trained uh, to go for the three ring work until the age of 18, uh, when they are mature enough physically. And then they will work until their retirement at the age of 55. Uh, at the moment of taming, a mouth is assigned to the elephant, and this mouth is then responsible for the elephant. He's the one who's going to fetch the elephant in the forest in the morning, and then he will give him a bath, which is an important moment of the day, as the mouth will check for uh, the elephant's uh, well-being and uh, for any injuries uh, to see if they can do the, the work of the day. If anything's wrong, he has to contact the vet. And if, it, if it's fine, then they can do their workload for a few hours and the mouth will uh, release the elephant in, uh, in a place in the forest where there is uh, enough food for the, for the elephant to forage during the night. So uh, the elephant and the mouth are really aimed to spend a lot of time together every day. Uh, so traditionally, uh, the mouth and the elephant would form a long-term dyad and they would have time to create a lifetime relationship. 
But nowadays, the maud profession is threatened uh, as the job is difficult and dangerous and it's quite poorly paid. So the maud tends to change profession and they have when they have the opportunity for it and they would prefer to work in the mines or in the new industries that are a bit less dangerous and with a better pay. So no, uh, elephant nowadays, they have to face frequent uh, maud change over the lifetime and sometimes uh, several times a year. And this is what I want to investigate here. How those frequent changes may affect the elephant behavior toward the mouth and in the working context. So to this purpose, we use a very simple experiment conducted on 87 elephants. A small arena was set up with wooden planks on the floor and the elephant was standing on one side of the arena. Uh, the mouth was standing on the opposite side and had to call the elephant and then the elephant had to cross the arena to join the mouth. Each elephant was tested twice, uh, once with his own assigned mouth and once with an unknown mouth, a mouth he has never been have to he never worked with before. And we recorded the success. So if the elephant joined uh, across the arena to join the mouth or not, and we also recorded the time the elephant needed to react to the call of the mouth. And here is what we observed. Uh, on this graph, uh, you have uh, you can see on the y-axis the success rate. So if uh, if the elephant joined the mouth. Uh, lots of elephants join the mouth, then uh, the, the success rate is high. And if the lower number of elephants join the mouth, then the success is low. Um, and on the x axis, axis, you have the age of the elephant. In blue, it's the results of the elephant that were when they were called by their assigned mouth. And in green, uh, the, the, the results of the elephant when they were called by an unknown mouth. Uh, if we look at the blue curve, when the assigned mouth is calling, we can observe that there is a big increase of the success during the training of the elephants, which makes sense. As they learn, uh, they progress in understanding the mouth comments. And then after the training, the success, we can see that the success reached 100%, which means that after the training, none of the elephant failed to join the assigned mouth when he was calling them. Uh, but when we look at the green curve, uh, when the unknown mouth is uh, is calling, the success never reach uh, 100% of uh, 100%. Uh, so lots of elephants uh, refuse to join the mouth when it was an unknown mouth calling them. Uh, but we're still observing a small increase of the success over the time. Uh, this can be explained by the fact that uh, as an elephant is getting older, he may have more chance to change mouth and he may have encountered uh, many different mouths during his life. And so uh, it's easier for older elephant to adjust to the call of a new mouth. So that's maybe why they would respond a bit better than younger elephant when they are called by someone they don't know. Uh, the, uh, as I told you before, we also recorded the time for the elephant to react to the to the call of the mouth. So on this graph, you have on the y-axis uh, the response speed. So the higher it is, the slow, uh, the slower the elephant was to uh, react to the mouth call. And the lower it is, the faster it was to respond. And on the x-axis, we have the relationship length uh, between the mouth and the elephant. So uh, since how many months they have been working together. And what we can see is that uh, there is a decrease of the response speed. Uh, with the as the the relationship gets longer, so the longer an, uh, the elephants know the the mouth, the faster they respond to the mouth. Uh, those two first results are already quite interesting because we have a strong uh, response depending on who's calling the elephants on already a very uh, simple and easy task, which is just uh, responding uh, when they are called. So what is happening when we make the task a bit more difficult? Uh, so we, uh, we set up again um, a small uh, arena, but this time uh, there was a novel surface to cross. So it was a, a white plastic tarpaulin. And uh, it's uh, 42 uh, elephants got uh, called by, their, by a mouth. So 30, 
four were called by their assigned mouth and eight of them were called by uh, an unknown mouth. And they had to, this time, cross the novel surface. Uh, a novel surface, for, uh, elephants are very sensitive to what's under their feet. Uh, they uh, often, uh, they, they, are, they have soft feet and they use them for uh, investigating the, the floor. And so it, for them, a uh, novel surface, they, something they have never encountered before can be a bit strange and un unusual, especially for those elephants that may have, may be used to a certain routine and always doing the same task. So it's in interesting to, um, uh, to present them with something unusual and uh, see their reaction in an unusual context. And so we again recorded the success if they walk on the on the novel surface to join them out or not. Uh, so what we observe here, uh, here again, you have on the y axis the, the success rate, and on the x axis the age of the elephants. What we can see here is that we don't have a strong age effect anymore. We don't see the success increasing during the training. And, but overall, there is uh, even a slight tendency for older elephants to be more reluctant uh, than younger ones to walk on the surface. This tendency is not that surprising, as in several other species, we can observe a decrease of the curiosity and exploratory behaviors with the age. So younger elephants are displaying more investigation behaviors, and then they realize that this novel surface is not that dangerous, so they will, um, well, they will be a bit more willing to work on it, when older elephants uh, won't even bother to try and just refuse to work on it. Uh, what's what is interesting here is that uh, in an unusual context, then even trained uh, animals may refuse to perform the task. But what it is happening when we look out the, for the results uh, depending on the familiarity with the mouth. So here on this figure, you can observe uh, the success rate depending on the relationship lens with the mouth. We divided the, the relationship in three groups. Uh, so first, uh, the elephant called by unknown mouth uh, on the left. In the middle, you have the elephant that were called by a mouth known for less than a year. And on the right, you have the elephant called by a mouth known for more than a year. The, the interesting part here is, uh, concerns the mouth uh, known for more than a year. As you can see, uh, the success response is much higher when they have been called by a mouth known for more than a year. And this means that elephants called by well-known mouths were more willing to walk on the novel surface compared to when they were called by unknown mouths or mouths known for a shorter time. To sum up, we observed that once uh, properly trained, elephants do respond better to mouth they know. But when confronted with novelty, the even trained animals may refuse to perform the task. Uh, this effect was attenuated when the mouth and the elephant had known each other for a longer time. So uh, maintaining longer relationship between working bias could promote trust and improve understanding between humans and elephants. Uh, in another study, uh, interviewed mouths uh, suggested that three years relationship is necessary to understand an elephant behavior and eight years are needed to develop trust between them. So this strongly suggests that the mouth familiarity and the relationship with the elephant should be considered in the elephant management, as it may affect their work, but also the safety and the welfare of both elephants and mouths at, as the tree logging industry is difficult and may require to perform dangerous tasks. An adjustment period should occur when an elephant is changing mouth, so they have time to get to know each other before performing difficult tasks. Um, this is all for me. Uh, with Martin, we would like to thank uh, all the people in Myanmar, uh, the mouths and the elephant, as well as the local vets and the research assistant who are helping with uh, to collect the data, and all our co-workers and co-authors and supervisor for uh, helping us with uh, all those projects, and also uh, the Conan uh, Foundation, the Academy of Finland, the European Research Council, and the Sakari Alopuro Foundation for funding these works. And thank you all for listening uh, to this talk. I hope you really enjoyed it. And just before answering your question, I encourage you to uh, go to 
watch again, uh, watch for the first time the talk gave by our uh, workmates, uh, Jenny and Carly, a few weeks ago. Uh, Jenny was talking about the mouth telephone relationship also and uh, the mouth situation, and Carly uh, discussed the uh, parasite infections in uh, Asian elephants. And if you want to know more about our work, here are the references of the published paper we've been talking about. Thank you. And you are free to answer the questions. Thank you very much, Osi and uh, Great. Uh, it was great. Um, a great talk, and actually resonates very closely with some of the things that we, that I think we see. It's great to see it scientifically set out as well. But I think we see when we're doing our our lockdown live streams every day. I've spent the last year, twice a day, most days, in the middle of a field watching elephants. And we talk a lot about friendship groups, and we talk about the hoop relationships and everything else. And then. Um, it's it's great to see these these things set out in zone. Of course, some some and, and that was shown in one of the previous talks as well, wasn't it? That some of the moots are uh, um, it, it, that's dependent sometimes on the hoot personality as well. And so and the hoot who's been there for uh, well, I guess that's my first question um, because not every elephant mahout gets on very well with every elephant. Um, did you see that even, do you see any relationship or correlation with that? Obviously, the, the longer the relationship, the more chance there was an elephant of, of crossing the uh, the crossing normal surface. surface. Um, did you see any, uh, I, mean, I suppose you didn't do a Mahout elephant relationship survey, so you wouldn't know, but did you did you see any any reduction to the fact that Mahouts, there are such things as Mahouts who, who don't get on well with their elephants? That's kind of the, the next step. Like it would be before now, we focused on the with the study, we focused on the so the familiarity. So since how long they know each other, but yeah, the next step would be to assess kind of the quality of the relationship. Uh, and uh, and for this, we need more data because it's a bit difficult. We would need we could assess it by questionnaire, but also by a behavioral observation during the uh, the night uh, during the the time they spend together not working, for example, and to assess the elephant behavior toward the mouth. Uh, when the mouth is approaching the elephant, is he trying to go away or is he willing to receive, to uh, to approach the, the mouth? And this is, uh, this need, this need quite a lot of observations uh, for each elephant. Uh, but this is uh, kind of the next step in these studies, yes. And we also, we did start to sort of collect some personality date on the Mahouts, but it's kind of work in progress. So we haven't really, really gotten out anything, but that has to be still analyzed and like properly done. But we have some information on that also. Okay, great. That's and that's a, okay. So our, our next question is from Dr. Big, Dr. Chachot Titaran, um, who I don't know if you know from Chiang Mai University. Um, he says, nice presentation and work. Uh, do you have any information on the stress hormones for the elephants in must when they are solitary or when they have contacts with other bulls, uh, both in must and out of must, and with females. Uh, so in general, I mean, we have way more uh, samples for the uh, stress hormone levels than the, the ones we used for the, like to compare with the social measurements, um, because sort of the, the amount of, of data we have for the social measurements, this is sort of somewhat limiting. Um, uh, do you have any information on the stress hormones for the elephants in must? Yeah, uh, um, so I, I would have... Other... Yeah. Echo of oh, me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we would, I, I think we might have, because, but the thing is like when we do the, the social questionnaires, uh, we usually do that in the uh, dry season when we are there in the field, and then they can't bring the... the the bulls, of course, that are in must, so we don't really get the sort of up to date or the, the yeah, the actual social data on that individuals. But we might have the uh, uh, cortisol information uh, of those individuals. But we would need to, I don't even know, but I think we might have the information by just like checking the, the database, like, and, and if we have information like when are they in must. I don't know, right? If it's written down no. in the Books, I'm not, not always. I think sometimes they, when they see it, they write it, mm -hmm. but they don't always do so. It's difficult. Yeah, yeah. To we don't that. always have like sort of the sample at the exact sort of wished time. So, 
Uh, we would not need have to check that, but that would be interesting to, to look at actually if there is some interaction between the sort of status of must and then the social situation and the stress hormones. Okay, so direction for new study. Yeah, next um, okay, um, and next question is from Dr. Kine, who knows a thing or two about me and my elephants. Would you like to unmute yourself and even switch on your camera if you like, Kine, and you can ask all the questions. Oh, hello. Hello, do you hear me? We do, Kine, we do. Yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. Hi, hello. Oh, where is your fair mind? Sorry, wait, wait. Okay, my video. Oh, Ooh, oh okay. Uh, now go. my view is on. So <laughs> I'm on the middle of other online meditation. I'm so I stop and I'm trying. Okay, my question to OCL is: You did um, a questionnaire survey on novel tests or something like that. Have you ever seen by yourself? how elephant react during the act of, you know, uh, when you make one comment or whether, they, whether the Mahouts make um, commanding or calling, do you notice any behavior changes before and while they're doing this task? Do you, know, do you make any note down? Is there any behavior you notice? Uh, we didn't focus on this kind of behavior uh, because we have all the videos, so we can work back on that. And uh, at the moment, we uh, we use a very simple uh, a way for the analysis. So, do are they were they willing to feel, feel, fulfill the task or not? But uh, yes, this is a very interesting uh, in question, and uh, we we have the material to investigate. Uh, the since we have the videos, we could try to investigate how the try to see the different behaviors and how the elephant is acting uh, really in terms of uh, behavior and f uh, body expression, depending on who is calling uh, after and, and, and before and different time, but that could be investigated. We haven't done it yet, but definitely. I oh, prefer, you should, sorry. Sorry, no, I was carry just, I was... uh, John. I, I was just going to say, so Kain, what, what you're thinking of is perhaps to see if my the elephant thinking, tried. Okay, go on, you go. You tell me your thing. Yes, I, I, I would like to expand a little bit. You know, something like me who have walking with, you know, watching how elephant behave long time. So elephant has always had a moment, a split of the time before they decide what to do. This is the decision time. They make an um, 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 experiment. Elephant is in other side of the marks area and somebody is calling, right? So elephants always respond to those mahouts who they know. This is nothing need not to be experiment. If you have dog, you call your dog immediate response. If you call other people dog, do they come? They may come, but this dog have a split period. They decide, decisive, decisive. they have to time out, they decide. So in elephant, either they decide to do what do, they stand still thinking, there is a split second. How long do they decide before they start to do this task? This need to be considered. That is what that's I'm what trying we, to understand, trying to explain. That's what we did actually with the, the time to, to respond. We can see that when the, they are called by an unknown mount or a mount known for a very short time, they take more time, they need more time to react and to decide to join. So for those who responded. This is it. It's a we uh, Yes. Also, there is a behavior. There's a different behavior in this decisive area. Elephants stand still, never move. Some elephants stand still, they flap their ear. Or some elephants are, they move their tail. That kind of things you have also have to consider. Another important thing I really would like to understand is the tone of the mahouts. We call authority voice. This decide a lot of things. 
Have you ever noticed it? Have you ever measured the tone, the voice of the Mahouts? Even the elephant do not know, the, even Mahouts do not do it, elephant. There's some, some Mahouts can successfully call any elephant. I can, you said, la, 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 la. If I say, la, la, this is what I'm calling to do. I have, yes. we are trained to do what is authority voice. So elephants are always very good in, in, in you know, listening. And they have the, you know, how well they train on this, on, on this, you know, giving command. That is why we train our elephant. Our main aim is every elephant in our workforce can be handled by any moves. This is our main aim. They uh, can be handled because the reason is we are not like zoo. We are, we do not have camps. We have logging camps all over the country. Elephant move to where the work requirement is. So the Mahouts cannot go with them. The Mahouts have their own family. They may leave, they may left behind. They, so we have to attach another Mahouts to go with and so our main aim is every, every elephant uh, uh, have to work with any mahouts. So any mahouts has to know how to give command, how to make, you know, manage. This is our aim. This is what I just want to make you aware. But we are completely aware of that. Uh, it's, um... So we kind of control for it. Obviously, we did not have the material to uh, measure uh, in terms of um, of a sonority and uh, the to to really measure the how do you call that uh, the tone of the of the mouth. But we controlled it in a way like we, as you said, some uh, mouths are calling uh, like uh, la 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 very strongly, and so it takes more time for for to pronounce the the syllable. And some other are a bit less tricks, but then call uh, more um, la 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 like this. Yes. And can, so that's what the, that. name, the name of cons they use, the name of repetition they use is also a fact. So that is why right. we control for that, and we used it and we we calculated the number of comments. In one uh, in one seconds, so the the elef the mouth had each mouth had a score of um, a ratio of a comment per second, and we try to control is this add an effect on the add an effect on the response of the elephant, and it did not uh, nothing came out from the analysis with that uh, for those elephants. Uh, we had like eighty seven elephants, and this does not seem to appear to affect the elephant. Uh, at least not as much as who was calling them and who uh, they were used to follow uh, the order. I sorry, think I mean, there is differences in mm. when I say there's the, sorry, but yeah. <laughs> so I remember like also from being there and doing the, the, the experiments and doing the tests that as you say, like also of course the, the different modes, they also themselves have different personalities and some are more shy, they call not or they call softer. And then there's the Mahouts who are like really calling loud. I think and it's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Also in the reactions like towards from the elephants towards the Mahouts. So it's it's a really important thing. And going on, like mm. to, it would be interesting like also if we have this, You can record it. You can record it and also, but, replay. And yeah. then you can do this very easily. You can record and replay. And then that is what you can do. So it was interesting to have like one Mahout to usually call softly, but like play a recording of somebody calling like loud, yeah. like to see like if it's really the auditory command or if it's like the smell and the, the vision of sort of if they recognize that. And the smell is another thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's sometimes we. <laughs> and it's raised, it raised many different yeah. questions, yeah. and uh, the um, the tone the tone question is uh, is very interesting, and uh, obviously the recording is something that is done in other species, in horses and in dogs, uh, but then we, uh, in birds. a way of the identity, we were like looking for the identity of the mouth who's calling, and if we do with a recording, then we are really more onto the elephant reaction to a way of calling that to someone specific. So that's different questions, but of course it would be need to be done. And then we can group all those responses to have like a more uh, holistic 
uh, understanding on of the elephant behavior toward the mouse, but it needs many, many experiments from different areas, and that's that's good. So we are working on it. It's slow, but it's going on. I mean, we see similar things from Thailand. The other thing you, you would have to do, as you say, going back to what my thing of uh, mahouts with good relationships and mahouts with bad bad relationships is, uh, is is a lot of observation and the normal behaviour of that mahout to what it, because some mahouts we, we have some mahouts on site who are who are very good mahouts have great relationships but they always shout but somehow they feel the need to do that um, whereas mm. they, I know them well I know they're not aggressive but if you, if you see that happening you and you don't know the relationship between the elephant and the mahout you think this man is shouting at his elephant but he just it's just how he does it. Mm. Um, the other interesting to go back to Kain's point, because we do see this quite a lot in Thailand as well, of elephants being moved around and mahouts being stationary. Yes. Um, I would say <laughs> it's quite often some mahouts, there are some mahouts who, who have a natural gift and can seem to work with, with any elephant. But for the most part, there's yeah. always a, a time to build trust uh, that takes from the elephant. We, we yeah. uh, as, as these guys that, suggest, that is, yeah. If you put yes. in a, there's a, there should be between between putting a get a new mahout with a new elephant, that there's a that they you give them time to build trust before you put them in a situation where where they they need to perform specific tasks. Um, and for our perspective, with elephants and humans in the same space, particularly humans that, who don't know that, elephants, that's 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 kind of crucial as well. Yeah, the difference between your Thai elephants are MT elephant is uh, John, you your elephants are staying with your uh, your moods a lot of times because the whole daytime in our settings our ele timber elephants are walking just a few hours a day lots of time they are we let them loose in the forest are the, the full the, the adult walking elephants the mostly we use about three hours in the um, uh, morning and then we give rest in another three so not more than six hours a day so you know if you do not consider how many times they are with, with mahouts, how many times when they are on their own, it's all affects their behavior, uh, John. This is a lot of things they have to consider. Behavior study, um, I prefer to do in the population, which um, humans manage a lot of time. Then you can see a lot of difference. Our mahouts are when they finish their job, they just let them loose. They're not, no, no, they don't need to give you know, feeding time, you do not have, you know, pr uh, taking back to the stable. We do not have stable. They, their forest, our forest is out there stable, right? They go, whatever they, the job assigned to them is finished. So a lot of factors you have to consider in your behavior set. How many time this particular elephant spend with his move per day? kind of job they are doing. Even in logging, the, the, the place they are going is not logging camp. They're just training camp, just, just training for a while and then let them loose. So that's it. lots of things, uh, you know. I prefer to see if you want to do behavior study, you can get much more, more better picture if you if the elephant is stationed in one place like zoo, like tourism camp, like yours. And you can have much better, you know, uh, factors what influence this particular behavior, that kind of stuff. That is what I'm think uh, I'm trying to explain. Okay, well, let's do them on as, as, as wide a wide a variation of places as we possibly can. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, that is why. Very okay. Thank you. Thank uh, that's you. all my question. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, so we more more study required and more places to study. There's always that's the great thing about these lectures is we, yeah, we oh, always get more so places to go. To do, so. Plenty more work for us to do um, and for you guys to do. We'll let, we'll let you uh, let you get on with that. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. It's um, it's uh, thank you. Um, any other questions from anywhere? If not. I will say thank you very much to OCN and Martin. As I say, great, great work as far as far as I can see, um, and and does tie in with especially the interesting ways of the different friendship groups. And for me, I think there are two things: the different friendship groups and the the way they work together. And I'd love to do that here, as as Dr. Kind suggests, um, and hopefully we can come up with we 
because we do we do try and manage in friendship groups but it, and we do have a vague idea ourselves as to which elephants are friends with others and the mahouts exactly know which elephants are, are friends and which ones have personality clashes and, and other things that, that go on um so it would be great to see that tabulated in, in, a, in a scientific way and to, to see if we can dig a little bit deeper and of course um it might mean a little bit more as well when they're they're able to be out in, in the deep Myanmar forest. So, that, so that's great. And also to me, the, the Mahout elephant relationship and the, the, the importance of, of, of at least giving a, 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 a building of not changing the Mahout too much um, would be uh, is, is something that I, I would like to see and for the elephant to have confidence in that Mahout and the ability to build a re confident relationship over time um, is, is, is also uh, very compelling in what you're saying. So um, if you have any final words, please please let us know. And, uh, if not, we'll say goodbye. Mm -hmm. well, just thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you <laughs> nice very much. Share. It was nice to share, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you very much then. Um, and thank you for all the questions. And um, please do join us, those of you out there in Facebook land, uh, tomorrow morning at 7.30. And I promise I will try and do it. I will do it. Uh, lockdown live stream at four o'clock tomorrow as well. I missed the last couple of days because of meetings, but I think I will be back. Thank you very much for watching. If you do feel like helping us keep continue our work, please do uh, have a look at the, the donate now button on our website. Um, me and Martin, Brent, do you have a do you have a favourite charity you'd like to donate to? No. Okay. <laughs> and that's oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Until Bye. tomorrow. Bye. 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 In, enjoy. Um, I will see you all tomorrow.